I'm Aaron Rutten, a professional digital artist and art instructor, and today I'll be taking an in-depth look at Adobe Fresco. I've scored this app based on what I feel is important in digital art software. I'm looking at brush variety, natural media simulation, ease of use, and other important factors. And I'm only counting default content, not add-ons. I'm using a pre-release of version 3.2 of Adobe Fresco. This is one of the newest art applications and also one of the oldest. That's because Fresco is essentially the art features in Photoshop in a dedicated app that is optimized for mobile touchscreen devices. Although it is geared toward pen-enabled tablets like iPads, Mobile Studio Pros, and Surface Pros, it is also compatible with desktop computers. As a Photoshop user, Fresco feels very familiar, so I don't get that, ugh, another art app feeling. You might be wondering, why did I choose Fresco and not include the quote-unquote industry standard Photoshop? Aside from the fact that Photoshop is an image editing app and not a dedicated art app, it's because all the new art-related features are being added to Fresco and not Photoshop. Now let's move on to the scoring. Let's start with the brushes in Adobe Fresco. The overall variety of default brushes in Adobe Fresco is good. There are a lot of Photoshop-esque brushes, plus many that are unique to Fresco. You can do some basic customization to brushes in Adobe Fresco, but it's not quite Photoshop. There's a lot missing. The organic media effects are some of the best I have seen. Apparently, the natural media simulations leverage AI. Still, there are some essential controls that are missing, which earns Adobe Fresco a lower score. Unfortunately, the awful blenders from Photoshop made it to Fresco without much improvement. These are not proper blenders in my book, since they just smudge. Adobe, you can do better. The selection of airbrushes is quite poor. The ink brushes perform well, but aren't anything special. I do think there is a good selection of texture brushes like chalk and other hard media. There aren't any particle brushes in Adobe Fresco. Nor are there any stamp brushes or brushes that can create multiple stamps. The impasto brushes are decent, but they are missing lighting and depth controls. The watercolor brushes are second only to Rebel. I'd say they are pretty good. They support fluid dynamics and can flow, but do not create long directional drips. The default pencil brushes in Adobe Fresco do not seem to have any tilt dynamics. Even so, the pencils in Photoshop aren't that impressive either. Brushes that use dual brush are supported in Fresco, but you have to edit the dual brush properties in Photoshop, then re-import the brush. Although the GPU is supported, there aren't any GPU acceleration options you can modify. Now for the brush performance. The brush cursor options in Adobe Fresco are the worst. You can show the dab shape or not. But what really stinks is that your cursor does not show up in a screen recording. That makes it incredibly difficult to make any sort of tutorial or help people learn this application. I hope that can be fixed. The max brush size in Adobe Fresco is good at 3,500 pixels. I'm disappointed with the brush resizing shortcuts. Considering the barebones keyboard shortcut support, I suppose I should be happy that I can even use the bracket keys. But the only other brush resizing option is a slider. Adobe Fresco does offer some good brush stabilization properties, though the advanced options in Photoshop are missing. No advanced anti-aliasing properties, but there is a hardness property. And brush calibration is a global setting, not per brush. How about the transformation tools in Adobe Fresco? The transformation tools are another set of features where I don't understand why they didn't include more of the advanced features found in Photoshop. You can do some basic transformation, but no distortion or perspective. Transforming groups in multiple layers is impossible because you cannot select more than one layer at a time. There aren't any proper distortion brushes, only the smudge brushes. Another important feature that's missing is a mesh warp tool. That should have been one of the first things brought over from Photoshop, since many art apps don't even support it. Next, I'll evaluate how Adobe Fresco handles layers. There is a decent amount of layer commands, but the palette is just too touch-oriented to work on a desktop. For example, I have to tap or click on a layer to get the commands, and the layer options are buried in a menu. There are some blend modes, and you can lock transparent pixels. Can we please stop making masking more difficult? The masking command in Adobe Fresco is buried, and you have to swipe back and forth between the layer or the mask thumbnail. There are some collapsed layer options, and there is a clear layer shortcut, but it's not very good because you have to click twice on a layer to access it. Let's see how saving works in Adobe Fresco. Because Adobe made this, it would be really weird if you couldn't export to PSD. It's okay, you can. In terms of supporting essential export file formats, Adobe Fresco doesn't match Photoshop. TIFF is missing, as are the file options. 
Technically, there is a backup saving feature because you can save version history in the Adobe Cloud, but it's not a proper autosave, and I didn't see any sort of recovery prompt like I'd get in Photoshop. I think you have to save first to send anything to the cloud. And now the papers and canvas texture features. There is a texture brush property, but not very advanced controls. And there is only one canvas texture to choose from. There isn't a dynamic canvas texture overlay, but you can fake it by adding a background image. No texture randomization in Adobe Fresco. This could be improved. You cannot change the texture, therefore you cannot import custom textures. And missing are any impasto or surface lighting controls, which really holds back such a nice oil brush technology. We'll explore the guides and grids next. Perspective guides are included in Adobe Fresco, and they are good. This is one of the recently added features that didn't make it to Photoshop. There are additional guides, like a very intuitive, touch-friendly ruler tool. At this point, the symmetry painting features from Photoshop have not made it to Adobe Fresco. You can, however, create dynamic grids. Here's what's up with the panels and palettes in Adobe Fresco. There isn't a proper reference image panel, although you can float an image later outside the artboard. Aside from importing a custom brush category from Photoshop, there aren't any custom brush palettes. No shortcut palettes either. You can count color picker customization out. While there isn't a selection of advanced color modes, by default, Adobe Fresco uses a natural color blending mode where yellow and blue make green instead of gray. Also missing is CMYK color proofing, but I guess you can use Photoshop for that since it's really easy to work between each application when your documents are accessible in the Adobe Cloud. Adobe Fresco does have some basic color swatches, and you can access your saved color libraries in the cloud. This is one of the few applications where you can load multiple colors on your brush. The options are limited though. It feels more like a clone stamp brush. There aren't any color harmonies, but there is some basic color variability you can apply to your brushes. The same controls are found in Photoshop. Moving on to the canvas features. The new canvas dialog in Adobe Fresco is good. The max canvas size is adequate at 8192 pixels, but compared to other art apps, that's kind of small. The selection of canvas presets is pretty good. You can resize the image as well as the canvas. You can't crop, but that may change. You can flip the canvas, but you have to click a couple of times to get to it. Photoshop's color profile options didn't make it into Adobe Fresco. Multi-monitor support is good. Though it would be quite useful, Adobe Fresco does not have a grayscale preview mode. Now for the interface. The visual appearance of Adobe Fresco is very clean and easy on the eyes. A little too light for my taste, but not bad. The organization of Adobe Fresco could be good or bad, depending on whether you are on a desktop or a touchscreen mobile device. On desktop, it is inefficient to switch between brush types using these nested menus. If I want to go from oils to pixel brushes, there's a lot of clicking involved. The way you have to manage everything through a home page is kind of a drag. It makes it slow to open, close, and save documents. As far as the interface ease of use, as a desktop user, at this point in Fresco's development, I'm more comfortable painting in Photoshop since it's more desktop friendly. This is unfortunate because the brushes and tools are superior in Fresco. It's not the most difficult app I have used, but I do think it's a mistake to port the art features from a desktop app to a mobile app, and not at least make it a priority to make the app usable for desktop users. I don't really get what Adobe has planned for artists who use desktops. They seem to be avoiding adding any art features to Photoshop, while also making Fresco's new art features hard to access for desktop users. Maybe they're trying to avoid backlash from a hard fork of Photoshop, and are hoping one day Photoshop users will wake up and they will be using Fresco to make art. The minimal default UI in Adobe Fresco is good. While the options to customize the interface and palettes are very limited, don't bother. When you restart Adobe Fresco, everything just resets to default. You're killing me here, Adobe! You can easily import brushes like you would in Photoshop, but that's limited to the pixel brushes. The brushes are in the Adobe Cloud for easy access, but you'll also have to manage them there, which is inconvenient. I don't see a way to export brushes like you would in other applications. You cannot export or import the layout. The selection of preferences is quite limited. Technically, collaborative painting is possible in Adobe Fresco, but only because you can share access to a document across multiple users. However, only one user can edit at a time. As far as the overall number of features, it's okay. It feels like Adobe Fresco was released a little prematurely. Adobe needs to prioritize moving all of the Photoshop art features over before this app will be comfortable for me to work in. Let's test my drawing tablet with Adobe Fresco. 
Pen pressure is good, same quality as you would expect from Photoshop. Pen tilt is supported, but I found performance to be inconsistent. Sadly, no rotation expression in Adobe Fresco. Multi-touch input works some of the time, I'd say it's okay. You can use your finger to paint and blend. You cannot use the eraser on your pen as a brush. Adobe Fresco does not support independent pen settings. And although the watercolor can flow, it does not drip or utilize an accelerometer. Last but not least are the tools. Adobe Fresco has some good selection tools. There is even a selection brush. At this point, there isn't a text tool in Adobe Fresco. There is a paint bucket tool, but no gap detection. You can use the lines on other layers as a reference layer to keep your fill separate. Although having to enable and disable reference layers is inconvenient. The paint bucket also has a preserve transparency mode you can enable to recolor strokes and fills. The gradient tool in Adobe Fresco is non-existent, as are the pattern creation tools. There are technically vector tools in Adobe Fresco, but you have to draw selections first and then fill them with the paint bucket on a vector layer. While there are vector-based brushes in Adobe Fresco, they do not create editable strokes. You also cannot edit the vertices or export in a vector format. And when you try to edit Fresco vector layers in Photoshop, they are just embedded assets. So I don't count these as proper vector brushes. Because I don't count selections as proper shape tools, I didn't score this one very high. Adobe Fresco has a few essential effects, but blur is missing. No comic panels or tools. The time-lapse recording feature is one of the best I've used. It can even render as a video. And there are even some basic animation tools. These are fairly intuitive to use and work well for simple animated paintings and GIFs, but for any serious production work, I'd recommend Adobe Animate instead. Now that I've reviewed Adobe Fresco thoroughly, let's add up the points to get an objective score. Adobe Fresco earns an objective score of 143 out of 273 possible points. If you want to know how this software ranks compared to other art apps, check out my Top 7 Digital Art Apps video. That's all for my review of Adobe Fresco. For more digital art reviews and tutorials, be sure to subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.